Are representatives of traditional banking systems beginning to think outside the centralized box and leaning towards embracing Web3? Is blockchain going to replace traditional banks? Let's talk about that. Hi guys, my name is Cassia, and if you didn't know yet, we are in the era of Web3. So I am here to share some thoughts on blockchain, crypto, Web3, and generally the modern money systems. Feel free to comment and subscribe so we can discuss some of your thoughts next time. We all at the moment on this planet in this century have the privilege of witnessing the huge impact that technology has on the economic structure. Technology has impacted the economy in ways that were previously hard to even imagine. Blockchain technology with its own set of rules and lack of rules started by providing an alternative to transaction processing and value transfer. Today, we see a development of a new economic framework facilitated by tech advancements such as Web3. I'm going to break it down for you so we don't lose sight of what is what. Okay, so first of all, what is centralized finance? Thousands of years ago, people used barter systems to exchange goods and services. I'll give you my goat's milk and you will fix my roof type of thing. Of course, this type of system was not perfect, so people turned to gold. Gold coins became the first universal currency recognized and accepted as a store value. Already in ancient Greece and the Roman Empire, there were bankers who were giving out loans, changing money and receiving deposits. The modern banking system can be traced back to medieval and Renaissance Italy, especially in wealthier cities like Venice or Florence. There were various families in 14th century Florence, like Bardi and Peruzzi, that dominated the banking system. The Medici Bank that was founded in 1397 by Giovanni Medici was the most popular one. But the history lesson is over. What is a bank? Do most of us even know how this system is built? So a bank is a financial entity, an intermediary between depositors who lend money to the bank and borrowers to whom the bank lends money. The amount that banks have to pay for these deposits and the income they receive from loans well, that's what we call interest. Today, traditional finance, which is hardly traditional due to the huge impact that technology has had on it, offers a variety of services enabled by trusted third parties, such as banks. That's what centralized finance is. CBI. Let's talk about the limitations of centralized finance. They act as brokers or trust agents. The whole system is based on intermediary structure. In some cases, payments and other financial transactions are not processed in a timely manner due to different and sometimes inflexible KYC procedures used by each financial institution. Limited privacy. So much personal information goes to the bank. And here is where Web3 comes in. Broad range of applications that use blockchain technology to provide decentralized substitutes for market systems and service providers. Web3 moves away from the good old traditions of centralized finance, and here are the innovations that come with it. Blockchains. Most of the DeFi services run on Ethereum network, but cross-chain ecosystems start to take shape. Digital assets. Tokens like Bitcoin stand for value which can be traded and transferred. Smart contracts, pieces of computer code that let the transactions happen automatically once the predetermined requirements are met. DAOs replace the corporate management structure of organizations. It's the principles in blockchain-based smart contracts that decide how the decision-making, voting, and other business activities are done. Disperse data storage. We are changing how we store user data. Instead of having it in one unmanageable server, hopefully soon all data will be spread over many independent network nodes. Even though most exchange users in Europe are required to go through KYC, that is because they use their credit cards to buy cryptocurrencies. Also, there are plenty of incentives in the crypto sphere and many exchanges reward long-term users. Okay, so how decentralized is it really? DeFi, in theory, is meant to be completely decentralized, but it gets a little complicated. Like I mentioned, many market players are frequently prevented from doing businesses with unregulated entities. So a lot of DeFi protocols implement KYC AML checks if the law requires it. The most advanced sections are stable coins, which serve to secure the token's fixed value, usually in relation to US dollar, decentralized exchanges, DEX, where transactions are automatically handled by smart contracts between peers or against a liquidity pool. They avoid storing users' assets in their custody. The most well-known type of DEX, even though they can run order books, are automated market makers, which completely eliminates the traditional order book. 
lending protocols, which put lenders and buyers together, giving them a chance to have complete ownership and control of their assets. Smart contracts record lending transactions on blockchains and users are not required to provide any personal information or credit history. Asset tokenization, of course, by using the NFT technology. Watch this video to learn what NFT is. Decentralized derivatives, the tokens that get their value from the behavior of the underlying asset. Insurance protocols, so like paying claims for certain failures of DeFi projects. Aggregating solutions that include liquidity mining protocols, integrated gateways, and single hub trading systems with speedy cross-chain transactions and low costs. If that's a lot to take, wait for this one. We are now at the point of DeFi 2.0, thanks to NFTs significantly enhancing the financial environment. You can now mint an NFT, which will next act as a smart wallet. You can benefit from much lower fees when transferring multiple tokens, for example. Not to mention the non-custodial liquidity or non-custodial staking, where attractive users' incentives are involved. The truth is, Web3 is just at its beginning and its technology has already transformed the financial sector. It definitely offered a new perspective, provided a flexible, open-ended solution more suitable for a wide range of clients. It is hard to say if DeFi will ever completely replace traditional banking, but one thing is for sure. People who got on the blockchain bandwagon are determined to reach a greater economy and a more equitable distribution of wealth. So. Power to the crypto community. Remember, whatever we talk about here is not a financial advice, it's purely educational. You should do your own research before investing. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to get some of the hottest crypto and NFT content. I'm here to make it make sense for you. That's all for today. See you next time.